Hey Cubs, welcome back to the channel. Now today we are going to address the elephant in the room. What do you mean he doesn't want to? Well, he doesn't really have a choice. <sighs> so we are about to dive into another episode of the Teddy Bear Rescue Squad, but our little chap has decided he is camera shy today, but we're gonna do it anyway. Let's get going. So this boy has already been unstuffed and washed so here I am stuffing him again I just found you know because there are so many bears it made sense to get some of them pre-done because you know it's the same process every time uh, he was a bit tricky to restuff especially with the trunk um, but we got there in the end which is the main thing And after stuffing him, it's a simple case of sewing his back up again. And I have actually done a tutorial on this and go through it step by step if you want to see that. Um, it's helpful not just for builder bears, but any bear that um, gets a hole in it um, for whatever reason. It's just a nice, straightforward, easy process. And designing sherbet was also meant to be a nice, easy process. I'd always decided that I'd wanted to do a mane on him but unlike the bears I've done this on previously I wanted it to go all the way down his back um, so I'm using the ruler I've got here was actually my grandfather's and he used it uh, when he worked in the uh, fabric industry I forget now exactly what it was he did but he had a lot of stuff from then and it's a really good ruler it's longer than your average um, but that really doesn't matter it just made drawing a straight line for such a big piece of fabric a lot easier um, than doing it in more than one go and then it was just a case of pinning it to him and sewing it on now I'm not sure if this is because of the type of fabric that Sherbert's made of um, because I never noticed it when I did this kind of thing to patches where um, the materials kind of pulled up and left almost like a ridge um, you know yeah I, like I said I'm not sure if it's the fabric or that I've gone too far away from the fabric itself where I'm attaching it I don't think so because I did that with patches as well I'm just really not sure. And after finishing the main, it's on to attempting his accents. This is the first time around of doing it. Uh, as you can see, what I decided to do for some unknown reason was measure out from pinning the fabric to his foot and then drawing around that and then cutting it out to size. Of course, this didn't work at all. Um, so yeah, I end up tracing around him onto basically tracing paper. It's a bit sturdier than that. Um, and then putting that onto the fabric. I apologize for the lighting in this bit. I was working uh, at night for a brief time, apparently. I don't know what happened there then. Um, but yeah, it's, this guy took a very long time for me to do, um, much longer than it should have. It was just one of those, I was working on other projects in between and he kept getting pushed back, unfortunately. Um, and especially with Christmas, uh, in the middle of this process, it didn't help. And this is where I cut off the end of the fabric for the main. I'd been debating having it go down his tail as well, but in the end I decided that I didn't really like that idea. Uh, plus, the flower on his tail I could not remove. Um, I was worried that the tail was just going to fall off and be no good. And I didn't want to deal with that, so I have left it there, whereas I took the one off of his head. So here I am attaching the accent first time around. Um, I just decided that I would try for the first time removing the existing fabric and putting in the accents 
after already attempting to attach the accents how I would do normally over the top of the existing fabric. So I did have to unstuff him again and this time because I'd already stitched the mane on I had to go in from the front. Fortunately it's fine even with his short fur still hidden the seam and he looks fine. And I was terrified doing this, absolutely terrified to the point where I even went on to Vinted and found a second sherbet just on the off chance that I messed him up. Um, thankfully I didn't and I didn't need to buy a second one but it was good to know there was one there if I needed him. Um, yeah and the thing I haven't mentioned yet about sherbet is that he is from the original bear factory uh, that was here in the UK before Build-A-Bear. Now it was my first experience of the process and I loved it and it wasn't until I actually worked for Build-A-Bear that I discovered Bear Factory was the one that was the ripoff. I thought that it was the other way around because when I'd seen the fiberglass bears um, from Build-A-Bear because basically what happened was Build-A-Bear bought out Bear Factory because obviously they'd stolen all the concept and everything. Um, and our store then became Build-A-Bear and I just thought it looked like a tacky American store which was really bad because when I finally went in there and started working in there I loved it um, you know it, it was just one of those things it was I think where you had all the yellows and reds sort of overpoweringly bright colors as well in the store did not help my perception um, but yeah I'm glad I gave it a chance and I've never gone back. I mean, I've never looked back. Of course I've gone back. I've got so many Builder Bears and, you know, like I say, I ended up working there. So, yeah, that was the wrong choice of words, but never mind. So, yeah, just adding all the colours, well, it's all the colours, all the accents to Sherbert's feet. And, yeah, this, it took some doing and it wasn't perfect when I did it because he's got toes on his feet as well um i'd missed attaching those whilst adding this but you know for a first try i was really happy with how they turned out in a way i was glad that i had to or rather that i decided to do the accents this way because i hadn't quite stuffed the base of sherbet's trunk enough so it was really floppy but i managed to restuff that whilst i stuffed him but I think this was actually the third time he got restuffed for various reasons. And on to adding his patches. Again, this was a last minute design choice. Um, I'm not sure why I hadn't decided this straight away. It's just one of those. Because I always knew I kind of wanted him to be more of a heffalump rather than an elephant. But, you know, I still think it's worked out quite well and I'm glad I did it. So I am really happy with how Sherbert has turned out and he's much happier to be on camera now. A um, little disappointed that in a couple of places we've got this raised area. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick it up uh, just where I've attached the extra fabric. That might be because of the style of fabric he has. I don't know. Um, but again, pleased with how these pads came out considering it's the first time I've done it this way. Yeah, if you haven't seen any of the other 
episodes of the Rescue Squad, I'll link the playlist up in the corner. That is it for this one, guys, and I will see you next time. Mm-hmm.